So what's the ruling of distributing pamphlets and leaflets that contain Quranic verses to non-Muslims? Can we just give them out willy-nilly at the dawah table? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So um, one of the uh, modern uh, kind of issues that comes up in the da'wah, especially on da'wah tables, is the distribution of uh, pamphlets and leaflets. Of course, as the da'wah has become more systemized and more, uh, more organized and so on and so forth, um, it's now moved from single kind of efforts to group efforts and organized and taught and organizations which help you uh, present the da'wah to the masses via a da'wah table and one of the best ways of course is to have some kind of short message on specific topics and some even general ones available to give out nice and easy for free in a, ma in a, in a manner which is easy to digest and hopefully has a good impact. Obviously the greatest weapon that we have in the da'wah is the book of Allah itself. The Qur'an is the kalam of Allah. It's something which even when put into translated form has an impact. What about, them? What about then when you actually learn the Arabic language and you internalize it in the Arabic language? It would be, it would be remiss, it would be strange, it would be silly in fact to try to cut out the Qur'an completely from our da'wah because of our fear surrounding the actual text itself. But is that fear founded? Is the fact that the Qur'an exists on these leaflets a problem? The Arabic itself on a leaflet, um, when it appears in a format other than the entire Mus'haf, the rulings differ. And I wanted to uh, focus uh, for a second here. The entire Qur'an is the beginning to the end, Alif Lam Mim, all the way until uh, an nas And this is considered to be the Mus'haf. As I said in a previous episode, when the Arabic text itself is greater than any other supplementary text, then the entire book gets the ruling of the Mus'haf. Now, no one is talking about giving the Mus'haf here that was dealt with previously. We are now talking about taking a verse or a part of a verse and then putting it into a separate leaflet. Let's just, for the sake of argument, say an English da'wah leaflet. Let's say a four-page fold, a trifold leaflet or whatever they're called, and there's a few verses. First of all, when a few verses are put into a leaflet, the leaflet itself does not take the ruling of the Mus'haf, does not take the ruling of the physical Qur'an. You might ask, what is the ruling of the physical Qur'an? So for example, to, uh, about uh, traveling to the land of non-Muslims, for example, as a hadith, which we are prohibited to do in principle, this wouldn't apply. For example, the touching of it, we know that it is required for Muslims to have wudu, according to the majority of scholars, to touch the Qur'an. Even though there's some difference of opinion, it's not a problem, but there's no doubt amongst the scholars that they all recommend it at least. If they don't obligate it, they certainly recommend it. So the non-Muslim, of course, doesn't even have a, a concept of wudu. They often will be uh, wearing impure clothing, will be maybe in an impure state. And actually, without even being disrespectful, they're not even used to handling something sanctified or holy. And so they're not used to being in a, you know, they might be clean physically, but they don't understand what tahara actually means, spiritually pure and actually ritually pure. Because there's two types of purity, internal purity and external purity. And the external purity is of two types as well. There's the physical cleanliness and then there's a ritually uh, clean. So just to make you understand this point, if you were to, uh, we have to make wudu for salah, for, for your prayer. Now, um, if you thought that wudu, ablution, was to clean yourself physically, then you'd be wrong. Because actually, if you were to make wudu, you could make wudu with this much water, and just about washing your hands, and, and uh, washing your face, wipe over the, uh, the head, and wash or wipe over the feet. And that's it. And if you, your hands are dirty, full of mud and so on and so forth, you're not going to clean them physically with just that little bit of water. If you look at the other angle, imagine you have uh, soap and, and all kinds of skin cleanser and everything, whatever, and you were to wet your hands and then rub your hands until they're literally raw, so clean that they're as clean as they could be. But you're not in a state of wudu. 
So it doesn't matter how much clean you are, you didn't achieve ablution. So there's a big difference between ritual purity, which is called ablution, and physical purity. And so uh, a non-Muslim is not used to the concepts of, of ritual purity. And so you may think, right, well, this person, um, how are they going to deal with the uh, Mus'haf? Well, here we've already said that the non-Muslims are not actually required, according to the uh, classical fuqaha, to have the rules of tahara, of purification when it comes to handling the Qur'an. So therefore, to handle something which is not even the Qur'an, i.e. an English pamphlet that has Qur'anic verses, makes it clear to us that it is not required for them to have wudu. Some scholars gave us an evidence of this, the fact that the Prophet ﷺ wrote a letter to uh, uh, Heraclius, and, and uh, of course in that he wrote Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, now, there's two points to note here that are different to the norm. Firstly, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim is different to just writing a part of a verse or some small a few words, which is often the, the, the way that Dawa leaflets are, 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 are created, right? You would only quote maybe the middle of a verse, or you might quote the few words from the beginning of a verse to prove a point or to establish a concept. Now, I just want to make it clear, that does not take the ruling of a Mus'haf. That doesn't even take the ruling of a verse. A verse has to be complete. So, inna a'atayna kal kawthar would need to be written down in its entirety for it to be considered a verse. But if you are trying to prove that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives and you wrote inna a'atayna that we have given you, this would not be actually a verse. So, it's very important to understand the difference between a part of an ayah and a full ayah. In the letter to Heraclius, the Prophet Sallallahu wrote Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And there's a consensus of all the scholars that Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is actually a verse of the Qur'an. And so therefore, when he did that, he knew that it was going to go to a person, a Roman, who himself was not Muslim and was going to handle it. And so therefore they said that uh, uh, it is not required to... Uh, for the non-Muslim to have a ghusl or wudu to handle the Qur'an. Of course, there's weakness in this argument because we know that the leaflet it does not take the ruling of the Qur'an anyway because it's a verse within a larger, uh, a larger portion of Arabic or English but non-Qur'anic material. So therefore, it gets drowned out almost and the ruling therefore of this letter does not take the ruling of the Qur'an. However, the issue still remains. Does the uh, existence of an Arabic text Verses, part verse, so on, cause a problem for the da'wah. You can take the safe side and just say, listen, let's take all the Arabic out and just use English or just use French or just use Urdu or whatever the language that the da'wah leaflet is in and that's the end of the story. There's no doubt that that's the safest position. You would obviously avoid all the differences of opinion and so on and so forth. But if you really wanted to actually present the Arabic text, that still needs to be dealt with. What is the actual ruling of that? The action of the Prophet ﷺ in writing Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in this letter and in other letters shows that this is a recommended matter. Then there's another hadith which is a weak hadith where the Prophet ﷺ is reported to have said that every matter which does not start with the uh, the name of Allah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, then it is in one narration aqta', it is broken, it is not complete, it is not perfect. And so therefore even this weak hadith and other principles and the action of the Prophet ﷺ with his letters led the scholars to say that it is recommended to write Bismillah ar rahim wherever we can, whatever, in whatever format. And so to tell someone, don't write a da'wah leaflet with Bismillah ar rahim at the top is actually a big statement when the Prophet Sallallahu already did. So I don't want to discourage anyone from saying it, from writing it, I mean. And actually, uh, uh, for you to uh, put it in English would achieve the same thing. And that's why it's easier to just stick to English and avoid all of the problems. You might say, what problems? Well, the problems are obvious. Someone is going to read this, either they're going to be irritated by it, or they're not going to be irritated, they like it, but they're not really interested in it, then they're going to trash it. They're going to trash it, and then that's obviously upon your neck, right? Wrong. How is it upon your neck? How can you yourself be blamed for what other people are doing with uh, uh, verses of the Qur'an, which you yourself have put in for their benefit, for them to read? Obviously, if they're Muslim, they should know better. If they're non-Muslim, then they should either bring it back at, or or uh, deal with it respectfully. Now, one of the interesting, of course, developments in waste disposal in our time is the boom in recycling. And a lot of people now are actually more akin to get rid of paper via the paper bin. And the paper bin, of course, is recycled in a way where it is obviously soaked in water and then mulched and then it's created again into new rooms of paper. This act itself is different from just throwing it into a normal 
a waste garbage bin where it's mixed with anything and everything and it is disrespected and so on and so forth. So actually our current waste disposal regulations make me even more confident to say that yes, and I could summarize this matter in, in this way, that it is permissible to put the Arabic verse in because it does not take the ruling of the Quran. And if you can write some kind of message that please dispose of this respectfully or please return this to us when you have finished if you're not happy with, then that's brilliant. That's actually the most perfect way of writing a, a a leaflet. If you want to avoid it, then just avoid the Arabic completely and just put the English down and then it's not an issue either way. And if and either way, when it does go out, you do not take the sin of them destroying it in a way which is unacceptable or disrespectful. The amount of benefit that's achieved by this act by promoting the Quran through the Da'wah leaflets is something too big for us to not do it because of the few people that might disrespect it in some way, random way of throwing it away, etc. So that's what I believe uh, governs the principles of Dawah leaflets. I think we should still print them. I think that we should focus more on the quality as opposed to the quantity. I think we don't need to write so much. I think that we're in a time now where written material is not as important as it used to be. Now with social media, it's about, present about presenting that which uh, people are much more used to, such as short video clips and audio clips and the like. And maybe that's a greater focus, but still there will always be a market for printed material, especially in shopping areas and large areas where there's mass movement of people. With these guidelines, either avoid the Arabic or minimize the Arabic, or if you include it, put a little warning. And if all of that doesn't happen, you still did something which is good, which is to give da'wah. You included some Quran, which is good. And if they get rid of it in a disrespectful way, that is not your problem. We do not carry the burden of sin that other people have taken upon themselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.